Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Sky is blue, sun is warm, and the Islamic maniacs are organizing small armies inside America. But please keep playing a theme from a summer place. I don't want to upset all of the Democrats out there. Muslim asylum seeker beheads Ikea shopper in Sweden? Well, keep playing theme from a summer place, though. There's no war. There are no missing emails. Hillary is just what America needs. Donald Trump is an all-around bad guy because he stands for borders, language, and culture. Keep on popping your Soma. It is summertime, you know, so why worry about anything? Keep your head in the sand. Full-blown Islamic insurgency, ISIS organizing small armies inside America. Muslim asylum seeker beheads IKEA shopper in Sweden. And while this is going on, oh, and one other thing, foreign-born population explodes to all-time high in the United States of America. Obama is flooding them in as fast as he can to permanently change the demographics of America so that your children will be living in a foreign nation. But keep playing theme from a summer place and keep saying that anyone who opposes the nuclear deal with Iran is a fascist and keep saying that Obama is a great man. Anyone who opposes any of his policies is a racist and keep listening to the somatic music. Now, here's a little story for you. Are you paying attention yet? I hope so. Now, this is a little sensitive for me because when I link the two words together, you're going to say it's racism, but I didn't write it. Hollywood Reporter wrote it. Seth Abramovich wrote it. His headline is, 98 prominent Hollywood Jews back Iran nuclear deal in open letter. Now, he said Hollywood Jews. I know it's forbidden to say so. You cannot say that there are any Jewish people in Hollywood. And you can't imply that Hollywood is run by Jewish people. If you do, you're a racist. But Seth Abramovich, who has a Russian Jewish name, wrote that, not me. And so I looked into the story. It says, 98 prominent Hollywood Jews back Iran nuclear deal in open letter. And I gasped. I gasped to see the suicidal nature of these people, some of whom are brilliant at making fantasy. For example, Mad Men creator Matthew Weiner, Brilliant fantasist. So this man has a fantasy that I, the Iran nuclear deal will prevent nuclear war rather than cause nuclear war. There are some other names you may recognize, such as Norman Lear, the fat slob, who about two weeks ago, about two weeks ago, declared he was a conservative. Right. Mike Medavoy. I think he's a big film producer, isn't he? Let's see some other geniuses in Hollywood who support Barack Obama at all costs. Well, you get the picture. You get the picture. And so here it is. A coalition of 98 prominent members of a Los Angeles' Jewish community, most with ties to Hollywood, have signed an open letter supporting the proposed nuclear agreement between Iran led by the United States. Identifying themselves as American Jewish supporters of Israel in the full-page ad, which appeared today in the L.A.'s Jewish Journal, the group urges Congress to approve the agreement because it is in the best interest of the United States and Israel? No, it's in the best interest of Barack Obama. And so you have to read the ad. And the ad provides an email address for more information. And we're going to look into this for a moment. We have a text of the letter. We have the names of the suicidal Hollywood Jews who signed it. And some of them could buy and sell me. I recognize that. I mean, they're so smart that they can buy and sell a man like me, and therefore I, I am worthless. Big shots who I've never heard of. Mickey Cantor, Eli Broad, Norman Lear. Actually, I think I can buy and sell them. But that's irrelevant. What's relevant here is that we have a repeat of history from the 1930s. You have Charles Schumer, the most prominent Jewish senator in the United States of America, who was as close to Obama as they come, saying his conscience said he could not sign on that, onto that deal. And so these stooges say that we join Intelligence Committee ranking member Senator Feinstein. Senator Dianne Feinstein is a compromised person from the top to the bottom. 
and they're citing her as a reason they backed the nuclear deal? I can guarantee you as I sit here, there's some money being made on the Iran nuclear deal. I can guarantee you if we had one investigative reporter in this country, they would follow the money from Iran, the release of the funds, and who in the Senate is voting for it, and whose husbands or wives may be profiting from new business with Iran. I can guarantee it as I sit here. I'd bet my undershirt on that one. And so I want to talk about that. I want to read some of the comments on that. I want to read about some of the other stories that are on michaelsavage.com. And I want to read you some of the other stories that I found uh, posted for you. Muslim let daughter drown rather than have strange men touch her. Bring in more of them. You see, we need to have America transformed from an evil Christian culture to something more sensitive like a Muslim culture. Orlando Airport unveils $250,000 Muslim prayer room. I'm not making it up. Is there a Christian prayer room? I don't know. But there's a Muslim prayer room for those of you who need it at the Orlando airport in order to make certain uh, that the uh, reflection room where Muslims can pray will be available to them. The decision was made after Emirates Airlines announced it will soon be offering direct flights out of Orlando to Dubai. A majority of the airline's travel is a Muslim. I have nothing against prayer. But the question is, why is the airport building them a prayer room? Is there a synagogue? Is there a Buddhist temple? Is there a Christian church? I don't know. I have no idea. The airport already has a chapel in Terminal A. And why can't they pray in the interdominational chapel in the near future? Answer, because they consider it traif. They consider anyone else's prayer room dirty. Bring them in. Bring in more of them. They're so tolerant. They're a tolerant people. You all know that. An inconvenient truth. Climate change industry now a $1.5 trillion global business. Well, that's an interesting one. You mean it's all about the money? I had no idea. I had no idea. What I want to do now is look at some of the comments on the article where 98 prominent Hollywood Jews who support Obama at all costs, have signed a letter supporting the Iran nuclear deal. As you listen to this soundbite, I want you to hear liberalism is a mental disorder actually acted out right in front of your ears. What you're about to hear indicates a psychosis, a full-blown psychosis on the part of Hollywood, especially Hollywood Jews who have no idea what they are doing. Listen carefully. I love playing Frisbee with my sons. I love the sound of the waves on the Pacific at sunrise. I love curling up with a good book. I love to see my grandkids smile. But if Congress sabotages the nuclear deal with Iran? We could be denied the very moments that make our lives worth living. What? Why? Dude, because we'd be dead. Super dead. Like totally fried by a major nuclear bomb dead. I won't be able to play Frisbee with my sons because there won't even be a Can you be believe frisbee. you're listening to this? The Frisbee will be melted. We will be melted. Or worse, toasted? Yes, Natasha, but most people think toast is delicious. Liberalism is a mental kind of disorder. It'd be like Exhibit a really a. dark, unpleasant cloud of death toast. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not actually worried about Iran dropping a nuclear weapon on the United States. Holy sh**. Is that? Yes, Jack, it's me, Queen Noor from Jordan. Look, it is true that if Congress sabotages this deal, there would be nothing stopping Iran from getting the bomb. That would likely spark an arms race throughout the region. Precisely, Ambassador Pickering. Ultimately, we could be forced into a war with Iran. Another dangerous, drawn out. Another reliable source, Morgan Freeman. A really, a genius. Lost. So wait, are you saying that instead of a quick, through the wormhead type of death, that in a war with Iran, maybe a lot of people would die much more slowly? Like, like if they were oh, to Oh, you idiot! You shut up. Go back and smoke really, your really long time, Natasha. I don't think you need a surrealistic food metaphor to comprehend the sheer recklessness of a war with Iran. Once a war begins, the chances of Iran developing a Can nuclear you weapon would Okay, you get the drift. Only. Exhibit A, liberalism is a mental disorder, but this is very serious stuff. This is beyond anything I would have imagined Hollywood would be capable of. The exact opposite. They twisted the truth backwards. They're saying that if the deal isn't signed, Iran will get a nuclear weapon and drop it on the United States of America. But the exact opposite is true, according to everyone, including a very prominent American Jewish individual named 
Gee, Charles Schumer. I guess they don't know about that one. But I do know about that. Hollywood Jews signed letter supporting Iran deal. Not opposing, supporting it. So let's go to truthrevolt.com and look at some of the comments that people have made about these psychotics. One, and I didn't say these things. I want to hear what you have to say. Incidentally, if this is too heavy for you and it's still summertime out there and you don't want to hear any of it, okay, I get it. I don't blame you. It's a beach day. School is going to start soon. Out here on the West Coast, my almost all my tomatoes are fully mature. The leaves are turning kind of dead. It means the tomato season is just about over, which indicates to me that, oh, it has been true since the beginning of civil art recorded history. Fall is about to begin in about a month. Yeah. And uh, these L.A. Jews will be surprised when they find out Holocaust 2 is not a movie, writes P. Smith. Another one wrote, sad but true. I wonder how many of them live in Israel or in ungated communities in the U.S. Another one wrote, they are serving as capos at the camp's gate. Another writes, please take the opportunity to, to instruct these idiots about the Holocaust. Next, it looks like a bunch of Z-listers who couldn't quite make it on the Dancing with Stars. Next one writes this, as with any ethnic group, the best and the brightest Jews generally don't select Hollywood as the industry for their careers. As with any religious group, the least religious moral Jews are found in Hollywood. So finish your morning coffee and take this latest advertisement from Hollywood with you to the restroom and put it to good use. This person wrote, Michael Savage once said, quote, these are the type of Jews who would throw 100 Jewish children into the ovens just to stay alive another day, close quote. I, that's very harsh. Who is Michael Savage? Does anyone know him? Who would have said a thing like that? This guy wrote, these idiots check their Jewishness in and out at LAX as excess baggage. Let's see, what's the next one? The next, uh, the correct term is collaborators. Nothing new. Read a little World War II history, Hollywood, France. Another one writes, Hollywood Jews do not represent my Hebrew people. Please make a note of it. Another one writes, Hollywood Jews represent communism, period. And another one wrote something that's more true than communism, more like crony capitalism. And someone said to me, when I asked why would Hollywood Jews sign a deal uh, onto a deal like this, when we know it's uh, the suicide ticket for Israel, possibly Europe, possibly the United States, money, follow the money, because Obama has promised them tax breaks, period. It's all about the money. But someone writes this, every communist state has had their elitist group at the top. And they are the ones that are always the most shocked when government comes and takes them away. Another one writes, shall I keep reading this? The liberal mind is insanity. The same Norman Lear that claimed that he was conservative, another liberal liar. Another one writes, I've never heard of any of those people. Who are they? Another one writes, Eli Broad, one of the signatories, is perhaps the largest real estate developer in Southern California. Frank Gerhe is perhaps the most famous architect on earth at the moment. Norman Lear produced All in the Family. Mickey Cantor was in Bill Clinton's administration and is a seriously screwed up individual, writes another one. Anyway, you get the picture. These are the people who have polluted the world with their movies and television shows. These are the people who have fundamentally transformed the psyche of the universe through their distorted visions. Anyway, you want to comment on this or not? WMAL, Austin, you want to comment on this or not? Go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm blown away that, that I hear those people making those statements uh, when nobody even knows what's in the deal. Kerry doesn't know what's in the deal yet. They're talking like they know what's going to happen if the, the unknown deal doesn't go through. It, it, it blows me away. But can you believe that they would do an ad saying that if the deal is not signed, America will get nuked and they won't be able to play Frisbee? Who wrote a thing like this? Make that up okay, I, I've opened with a comedy show on the Savage Nation, the comedy of the psychotic liberal mind in Hollywood. If you care to comment on that, or, and here's the big one, we're going to continue the discussion we started yesterday on prostitution, should it be decriminalized? It was one of the most exciting discussions we've had on the show in many long, uh, many a long time, in a long time, many a long year on the Savage Nation. 855-407-282, we'd especially like to hear from sex workers should prostitution be decriminalized? Also, for those of you who want to laugh, 
in exactly one hour and 10 minutes, we are having on this show, no, not Barack Obama, we are having Jackie Mason on in one hour and 10 minutes right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It's summer. I could not believe what I was looking at, but I looked at it. I looked at it with disgust and shame that these mentally ill people Quizlings would not even understand how foolish they will sound once I expose their idiotic ad on the Savage Nation. They can't play Frisbee with their grandchildren if we don't sign the deal because Iran will get the nuclear weapon if we give them the... Wait a minute. Iran will get a nuclear weapon if we don't give them the weapon? Let's see. We should give Hitler the nuclear weapon who has said he'll wipe out Jews in order to pre prevent them from wiping out Jews? Iran is on record saying they want, want to wipe Israel off the map, morons. Now you understand why Hollywood is so hated west of the Hudson River. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. And the innocence can never be recaptured. But you know how I do this show every day? Do you know that I psychologically say to myself... What would I, as 17, 15 years old, be doing today? What would I be thinking? What does this world look like to me today if I'm 17? And by doing that, it helps me comprehend what the average person sees as they get up and go about their daily business because they don't see the world through the eyes of an adult, even if they're intelligent, even brilliant, in their normal uh, daily lives. They don't want to walk around carrying the world on their shoulders they don't want to carry the world on their shoulders so it's easier for the Hollywood fantasists who create the imagery that the world both loves and hates to say oh yes President Obama told us therefore we know he's he's never never lied before we know what's in the agreement because he told us it's gonna eliminate uh, Iran getting a nuclear weapon they don't know that Schumer said no and they sign on to the deal and so I say, how, how crazy can this get? Here's some other news. Sharpton blames police for all black riots over the last 50 years. And Microsoft still pays him his salary. Can you believe this? Microsoft NBC still pays this, this shyster street radical a salary to keep him off the streets. Now, you know I was not a fan of John Kasich. Remember I told you ever, oh, they John Kasich genius after the debates. I, never, I was never impressed with him. Kasich wants illegals to stay. End of story. I was right again. Rand Paul, who I call Curly, who is finished, he's in less than a fiver, below 5%, attacked Donald Trump because he realizes that he was Trump by Trump, and that's the end of the story. Goodbye, Rand Paul. Goodbye, Rand. Why don't you just go into the ophthalmology business with your father and leave us alone already? Obama administration warns states against defunding Planned Parenthood. What else? If the government gives Planned Parenthood a half a billion dollars a year in federal grants, and a good portion of that money flows back to Democrats through donations, why wouldn't the most corrupt administration in Argentine's history uh, not want states to not defund Planned Parenthood? By the way, at um, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern, I do have Jackie Mason on. I haven't had Jackie on the show, I would say, in 10 years, more than 10 years. But I, I heard him on the uh, Aaron Klein show. Uh, it was so funny. I can't wait to ask him what he thinks about Hollywood Jews backing the Iran nuclear deal. Only he can take what they've said and twist it around to what they actually think because I can't even understand what they're thinking. He probably can. And he will be with us. Oh, yes, indeedy. I forgot to tell you something. There's some good news that would indicate something's going on. By the, what's the big topic right now? legalizing prostitution pros and cons i did this yesterday in the last hour and a half i got callers that i never heard from before guys particularly who said that prostitution has ruined their lives because they've engaged in it all their lives i couldn't believe some of the callers like a guy from florida wftl remember that caller he was amazing and i heard from stations that rarely call you know because 
What it comes down to is the old adage from ancient Rome by the historians. They don't care about what's going on around the world. The average person does care, but they have nothing to say about it. Hillary emails, you know that's going to come to nothing. You're getting all excited. I told you yesterday it'll come to nothing. I told you it's going to be covered up by the, by the Obamas. I told you it's all a, a scam. And I hope I'm wrong. Okay, I hope I'm wrong. I'm wrong like everyone else occasionally. I hope I'm wrong on that one. But when I brought up the prostitution thing, the lines were just exploded. And we couldn't stop talking about arguments in favor of the legalized prostitution debate and arguments opposed to the legalized prostitution debate. And I came out very strongly against decriminalizing prostitution based upon this one fact. And listen very carefully. If you're a libertarian, and I happen to be a sexual libertarian, I'm on record for that, but that does not apply to this. Why? Because when a society legalizes prostitution and it becomes readily available, the people who seek out such things are going to want a bigger and bigger kick. They're not going to find it very exciting to make a selection from adult women if it's readily available. It's too vanilla for them. So they're going to go to the to the racketeers, the gangsters, the sex traders who bring in these women and say, whisper, whisper, I'll pay X more. I want someone younger. And how much younger? Well, why don't you go to Cambodia and see where they're having eight-year-old girls taken out of these villages and turned into prostitutes? Because that's what's going to happen. It's happened in Thailand. It's happened in Cambodia. It's a nightmare. Once you legalize a vice like this, children get sucked into the vortex so be very cautious where your libertarian thinking leads you. I, I thought I'd bring that. That's my opinion. And I'm willing to accept your opinions because I think it will make for an exciting uh, conversation. And talk radio is about conversation. Converse. That means to keep the verses flowing. You get it? So if you want to uh, trade verses with me, the phone number is 855 I have some good news for you. I went on to my own website, Michael Savage. Did you see the new picture of me, the new green suit, green shirt, and the brownish green hat? I bought a new suit for the picture. <laughs> and it's for the, my new book, Government Zero, which will be out in, in October. I'm not gonna, you're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. I only posted this book yesterday. It was number 49,000 before it was posted. Pre-order Michael Savage's upcoming book, Government Zero, buy now. But here's why you bought it. Limited first printing will be sold out. Get your copy now. I asked my publisher, I said, hey, this is an interesting publishing fact that you don't know about. Way back when, when I started publishing books in 1972 with Earth Medicine, there was a, um, an interesting thing that went on in the publishing world, which is that when they did a first printing, fine. Then they would go to a second printing. If a book was a big seller, and you'd see first printing, 25,000. Second printing, 55,000. Third printing, 85,000. If it was a real bestseller, you know, how it would keep rolling, the big ones. So I said to the, the publisher, I said, Kate, is there no way to let people know that there's a first printing? Do they still do that? Or is that each, each printing is the same? She said, no, it's not the same. She said that a first printing has a one after the number on the book. And that makes it a collectible. I said, I have to tell my audience now that because many people want it, it's my last big nonfiction book. That's my commitment right now. And so I did that yesterday. The book went up to a number. This is in one day without promotion, not available. 106 on, on uh, less than 100, number 106. I don't know where it is. I don't really know, but it's exciting. I think everyone understands what this is going to mean. It's the most important book of our generation. Government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. And if you go to Amazon, you will see that I'm telling you the absolute truth. Here it is. I cannot believe it. Number 18 in books, politics overnight. It was number 12,000 yesterday. Number 18 already in one day? Yes, because my loyalists will probably want to own this book as part of the books they bought over the, all the years. And I'm not going to read all the books I've written. They're numerous. They're near 28, 30 uh, different uh, uh, books. And I love the cover. I like the, the uh, picture of the nation in my hand. Government zero. Who could come up with that but yours truly? I look good. Okay, so let's go on to the callers on legalizing prostitution, the celebrities who are in favor of giving Hitler uh, with a headscarf a nuclear weapon. 
Kurt on WBAP. Welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your topic? Thanks, Doc. Yeah, the, these uh, Hollywood celebrities, they are reprehensible. They know these uh, people that stare up at the screen in the movie theaters have malleable minds. They know that they're quizzlings, and they're going to respect them for what they said. For, for instance, Jack Black. Jack Black will never get played in this house again. I used, to th I used to think he was a pretty funny guy. And you know what, Norman Lear? Turns out Archie Bunker was right and you were wrong. Look at Mike. <laughs> look, look. Yes, the characters he created were quite an extension of his own mind. And he was actually fighting with the smarter part of his brain by creating Meathead. That's right, look at Meathead. In other, in other words, Meathead was, was, was actually the real Norman Lear's brain. Meathead was the beginning of what we have now in all our universities and our government. We got all those meatheads running around, and now we got all these problems. Everybody goes, everybody's thinking, how in the heck did that happen? Well, we put a bunch of meatheads in charge. So thank you, Norman Lear, for enlightening us, you big dope. <laughs> See, that man didn't get mad. It's summertime, and he understands not to get angry. Uh, male dancer. Oh, this is good. Rob on WABC, thank you for calling. What is it that you're saying on which topic? Michael, about the legalization of prostitution. I was a dancer. Well, 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 Rob, Rob, I'm sorry. I didn't catch it. Talk a little slower. You're breaking up. Sorry about that. I was a dancer uh, for two years as I was going through med school, actually, the whole stereotypical thing. And I would actually say it's better to legalize it for the safety of the people involved in the industry because oftentimes your tips might get withheld um, if the boss is short, running short for the month. Or um, Wait, well, let me see if I understand. You were a male dancer while working your way through medical school so you're a doctor now i'm almost a doctor i'm in residency right now all right no it's interesting so you you are a male dancer in what a male club or a female club well on my second point actually talking about the stuff um where you said if you legalize it people are going to go for the more extreme stuff i would actually be offered extra money if i wanted to do a party for gay men as opposed to dancing for women so this stuff does happen even in legalized industries right now, which would be dancing. So I oh, wait, wait, but you, but you, you're an adult, and you were an adult while you were a male dancer. I mean, as you were dancing, but don't you think that this would tend to suck children into the into the web? I think the allure of easy money could suck the children into it, and that's why I think if you regulate it and you have very strict penalties for it, that would help protect the workers who are already in but, but rob listen listen you're you're a guy who's really closer to this than i am look what's happened in thailand and cambodia there the poor country people are selling eight-year-old girls into into prostitution no that's and this is where i see I want, and, and by the and by the way there are severe penalties in cambodia against child prostitution it's banned by the united nations but you and i both know that there are government officials who are so corrupt they would sell an infant into prostitution if they could get a dollar out of it you know that and i know that correct so uh, what kind of medicine are you going to practice uh something to do with the prostate or what <laughs> no um, no neurology actually <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> you know, it's an neuro neuro neurology happens to be one of the most fascinating subjects to me. I study neuro neurology journals all the time because I'm so interested in, in what goes on in the nervous system. And uh, as, does a neurologist do surgery? Oh, no, that would be a neurosurgeon. That would be so, a, a different uh, field. Interesting. So the neurologist would look at things such as strokes, uh, that type of thing? He would, but um, that could a stroke could also be part of the cardiovascular system. So uh, you would probably go to a general practitioner first, and then he would refer you to a specialist based on. So why would a man so educated as you listen to this show? Is it because you're waiting for me to have a stroke on air because of the pressure I put on myself, and you think I'm one of the people who belong in Ripley's? Believe it or not, what attracts you to this show, Rob? I'm very because you're an unusual caller. You're an unusual caller in an unusual profession. You're a male dancer who's about to be a doctor and neurologist, no less, and you love the show. Why? Oh, I'm a conservative. I agree with you on about. 95% A conservative male stripper! <laughs> <laughs> I got to make somehow, Michael. I mean... Hey, what's the difference? If it's legal and the people are over, uh, you know, over age, what's the difference? Well, sure, of course. This is all based on consent. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't trafficked into being a male dancer. It was my choice. 
<laughs> Stop it. Now you're pulling my leg. No, that's a dangerous word, trafficked. Um, so, Rob, how did you get into male dancing? That's an interesting thing. I mean, it, what, what, what does a medical student do other than, what, what do they do to work on the side to make money? There's a, I think this is more common amongst women that uh, I do know some of my... Oh, so women in medical school are strippers. Well, if you remember the story, I believe, I think this happens in law school, too. I think it was the, uh, who was the girl from Duke that was doing this, like, for you? She was actually in pornography. Well, I could see a, a woman about to be a lawyer being a stripper, because we know where that comes from, the uh, hooker with a heart of gold. I understand that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to make too many jokes at one time on an electronic medium that's hard to transmit without using my eyebrows. Okay, Rob, so you say it should be legal. And you you don't feel it would pull children into it? Yeah, well, we would need the All right. to uh, make sure. All right, he says this, there's got to be very strong uh, penalties for child prostitution, which I agree, there should be a death penalty. How would that work? Would that work if there was a death penalty for child prostitution? Both those who uh, trade in the children and those who engage with children should be executed within 30 days with one appeal. Would that tend to put a damper on uh, abusing children? I think so. I'll never forget, and I, I got to do this quickly. When I went to Malaysia many years ago, I was shocked coming into the Kuala Lumpur airport. There was a gigantic billboard, and it said, uh, drug possession is punishable by death in Malaysia. I was stunned. That tended to, to put a damper on drug dealing uh, in Malaysia. You see what I mean? I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Very same quizzling, insane liberals in Hollywood who were saying give Iran the bomb to avoid a nuclear uh, war are those who are saying bring in more Muslims because they're all peace-loving. Are you ready for this story? Because you better hold on to your hats. Muslim asylum seeker beheads Ikea shopper in Sweden. Go ahead, change the dial. It's just a right-winger talking. But if you want the truth, pay careful attention. A Muslim asylum seeker beheaded an Ikea shopper in Sweden and killed another one. It was a mother and son, by the way. The Ikea superstore reported by Breitbart.com reported this. The Ikea Superstore near Stockholm, which witnessed a double murder this week by Eritrean as asylum seekers, has responded by ending the sale of kitchen knives in the store, and the government of Sweden has stepped up its policing at asylum lodging to defend Muslims against a back backlash. He cut off the head of a Swedish native mother and her son. They were only in the country four weeks, and they went berserk and kill non-Muslims. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. You know, I don't like falsetto. I don't care for it all. Welcome to the show. I'd rather hear a Percy Faith's uh, theme from a summer place. So when I hear this song, it harkens back to an innocent time for me, an innocent time for America. And now we live in anything but innocent times. We live in a time when the government itself has turned on the people. We live in a time when the government is flooding America with illegal aliens who are alien to our way of life. We're living in a time when the government is stealing taxpayer dollars at a rate nobody could ever comprehend in order to spend money at a rate nobody could ever support. We're living in a time when we have a government seeking to give a nuclear weapon to a nation that is on record saying they will destroy the state of Israel and then Europe and then the world. And that's why we play songs such as this. And instead of talking about that, and uh, the article that I led with in the last hour is still astonishing to me, 98 prominent Hollywood Jews back Iran nuclear deal in open letter. 
And they include, I don't know, intelligent people like Matthew Weiner of Mad Men. I wouldn't say Norman Lear is intelligent. I would say he's senile. The other names I truly don't know, but they're apparently very important in their own mind. And they came out in favor of the deal with Iran, even though the deal will give Iran a nuclear weapon, which they say they will use to destroy uh, Israel. These atheists, I don't know what else to call them. Uh, I, I made up a, an acronym, Ginos, Jews in name only. I, it didn't really stick. Maybe it applies. I've heard the phrase fallen Catholic, elapsed Catholic. Lapsed Catholic. I've had Catholic people say that they're lapsed Catholics. I, I kind of find that amusing. But Jews like this are linos, which uh, is sad. But that's not what people want to talk about. You want to talk about should prostitution be legalized, pro and con. That's what you really want to talk about. And 855 I received an email from a friend in New York City who said this. Savage, under de, under de Blasio, the mayor, there has been an explosion of brothels in and around Wall Street. Back pages and Craigslist not only offer these underbody rubs, but in-call and out-call escorts at $200 a pop and everywhere. He says in a, in a building in which his friend lives, a very upscale building, there were many apartments where hookers were working out of the apartment right there. And he said it gets even worse. You won't believe this. He said they had their Johns come up dressed as delivery men with those green vests and fake food packages. So that's what socialism brings. Prostitution and terrorism. 855-400-7282. Again, another story that's so shocking, I have to read it again. Muslim asylum seeker beheads Ikea shopper in Sweden. That's the headline. A Muslim asylum seeker from Eritrea who had only been in the country for four weeks, went into an Ikea store and cut off the head of a Swedish mother and her son shopping in the Vasteras branch of Ikea, the largest in the country. Immediately after the attack by the newly arrived immigrants who shared a room in a government asylum shelter and had only arrived in Sweden less than four weeks before, Swedish police were rushed to protect, not Swedes, but migrant communities from, quote, dark forces in society. Local police across the region have been tasked with taking these measures to be there for safety purposes for everyone there, those who work there and those who live there, said Vastamanlan police spokesman Per Agrin. And IKEA has responded to the beheading of the mother and son by the Muslim by eliminating knives from the store. Now you understand when I say to you government zero. Now you understand what I mean by government zero. Now you understand what I mean by the leaders of the Western world, almost all of whom are socialists, whether overtly or covertly, who are destroying the nations that elected them, where the real citizens the real citizens of the nation have almost no voice. That's what I mean by government zero. Sweden is suicidal, and it's interesting that Sweden is held up by our president as a model. You see, Democrat socialists like Obama always point to Sweden as their model of a socialist utopia. And take a look at what they've done to the Viking nation. How is that even possible? That a nation as proud and as militant as Sweden once was has turned into a nation of what word do you have that could describe a beaten nation? A nation beaten into a pulp by cowardly, quizzling politicians. And who is going to save us from these hordes? Who? Barack Obama? Who on the Republican side is going to save us from this influx, whether they be from Eritrea or from Mexico? Tell me who. Tell me who's going to stop this onslaught. Who? But that's not what you want to talk about. It's an old story. What you want to talk about is the prostitution issue. And I think it's an important issue because that's something we can do something about. And why am I talking about it? Because Tuesday, Amnesty International, a socialist front group, as far as I can tell, I don't know who funds them, but I, I suspect they're not as good as, as, as they may appear. Amnesty International called for the decriminalization of prostitution. Also in this hour, if this is not enough for you, we have the one and only great Jackie Mason coming up in about 20 minutes. 
He will be performing October 24th in Westbury, New York at the NYCB Theater at Westbury. JackieMason.com. He'll be with us in about 20 minutes to uh, give us his opinion. Sarah, WABC, your opinion on the prostitution issue. Go ahead, please. Uh, Michael, if you legalize prostitution, one of the things that's going to happen is that it's, become, it's going to become readily available, which means it'll be much cheaper. And what's holding back people, men from cheating on their wives right now? So that, that's going to lead to adultery because it'll be easy. It won't be illegal, which then will lead to divorce, which then will lead to mess of children, which then could lead Okay, so now you know why the socialists want legalized prostitution, which is to further destroy the institution of heterosexual marriage. Absolutely. Because people kept saying, why would Amnesty International make that an issue when there are so many other issues on the planet, such as the sexual mutilation of Muslim girls, the trafficking of, of, of girls by ISIS? Why are they making this an issue? Because they haven't done uh, uh, enough damage to marriage. They need to do it even more. So that's what you're saying. Yeah, and, and the truth is, and I agree with you on the children, because if it's so easy to get over the border now, it's an illegal. You can have children come in, take their ages, you use that, they're that much cheaper, and it really destroys the entire institution of family that we have in this country. Well, now you know why socialists want legalized pro prostitution, because it further diminishes the sanctity of marriage and the reason for marriage, for many men, by the way, is sexual. Isn't that true? Yes, possibly. I mean, I mean, Sarah, let's be clear. Don't you think a lot of men get married just for the sexual uh, access? Uh, I don't know if I would say that across the board, but there may be. I'm sure there's a demographic of them. Well, but your implication is that because of legalized pro see if you're implying that most men are in marriage for the sex and that if there's legalized prostitution they get sex that's legal for very little money they wouldn't get married so that's an interesting concept right there to think about but i thank you for having the the wherewithal to call the uh, show the savage nation mike on wabc in new york go ahead what's your opinion Part of the allure of going to Toots is the criminality of it, and um, I think it loses a lot of its appeal for those of us who enjoy it if it's legal. You're saying part of the allure of going to prostitute is that it's dangerous? That it's criminal. And there's a certain um, excitement knowing you might get caught. Well, by, by using that logic, we should legalize everything that's illegal. If you say it's a thrill seeker seeking a thrill because it's illegal, so legalize heroin as well? Well, I mean, no, no, of course not. But um, that it, I'm just saying from my own personal experience that, that I, I would be less interested in it if it were legal. You would be less interested. So you, you indulge? Yes. All right, so then speak speak from your experience. You get a thrill up your leg when you go out looking for a hooker? Yes. And I don't even necessarily have to land one. Oh, wow. You mean just, just, just hunting gives you a thrill? I'm not going to say hunting. That's a little bit too misogynistic. Let's say shopping. <laughs> okay, so where do you do your shopping? Online or you walk the streets at night? the ladder not during the night in new york city i assume mike i'm not going to get more personal but saying in new york city you can walk around and look for prostitutes no i'm speaking of a different city newark new jersey unbelievable and what you just drive around and look for them yes unbelievable now, aren't you worried about disease mike no, because there are certain uh, certain methods to prevent that. Well, I'm not so sure of that. I mean, you just you're you're playing Russian roulette, Mike. You know, we all hear that uh, condoms prevent sexually transmitted diseases, but they don't 100. percent You know that. Maybe this is another part of the appeal to me. What that you could get sick and that you can get sick and die? Yeah. Oh, so you're, okay, I'm not trying to be, you know, brutal here, but, okay, what you're saying is you like going to the dark side, risking your life, because you're somewhat kind of self-destructive? 
Well, I, I'm not sure if it's self-destruction or self-loathing or, or what, but um, I used to think it was just a criminality, but now that you point out the danger, maybe it's more than that, a death wish. Uh, are you pulling my leg, or do you really mean what you just said? No, you helped me realize something. Well, l let's go down the list of potential diseases you can pick up from a hooker in the streets of Newark that you may not be aware of. And let's start with the little things like scabies, uh, bed bugs, lice. Did you ever think about that? You're making me a little bit uh, skeevish. Can we stop? All right. Well, well, maybe maybe you should think about it. I mean, because there are diseases that are not readily thought of as uh, sexually transmitted, but they are, and they're dermatological in that case. I, I hope to, that you don't find this question uh, offensive. Are you in a relationship, or are, you, or are you married? I have to go. All the best. Oh, thank you. Okay, you see what just happened? You see, th this was an interesting call, and I don't want to capitalize on human pain, but here was a man calling a national talk show to have allegedly an intellectual discussion about legalization of prostitution or not. And before long, did you see what happened? It became personal. And he learned something. By, th by speaking about it, he was actually having what you would call here a confessional. This is a, a confessional moment on the Savage Nation. He confessed that he was, in a, was married. He seeks hookers in Newark. He didn't think about diseases. And he, he got very nervous just now. Maybe his life will change for the better. He realized that he was playing Russian roulette and he was somewhat self-loathing and suicidal. This is something that talk radio, by the way, used to do on a regular basis. This used to be the metier of talk radio, where the callers were king and where people had transformative experiences with hosts able to bring them to that moment. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Talking about bed bugs, the FBI has picked up a blank Clinton email server. This woman is so evil. She is so evil that after this liar gave the FBI the server, along with the thumb drive that contained copies of these classified emails, we now learn from the lawyer for the Denver-based computer services firm Platte River Networks, which took control of the liar's server, she said that the server is blank. This is right out of something you would see in the age of the generals in Argentina. And I want to remind you of something about Hillary Clinton. Remember the Nixon years? The, the, you can read about it if you don't remember it. Do you remember what happened then? Do you know what they did to Nixon for a few minutes of missing, erased White House audio tapes? The liberals who are rushing to the defense of this liar are the very same lying liberals who sought Nixon's head for 18 minutes of erased White House audio tapes. She erased the server because what was on it? They will argue, well, what difference does it make? So what she did here is very interesting. She can still be charged with obstruction of justice, which won't happen, but she will not be charged with a violation of the Espionage Act, which would require a jail time. I mean, she wiped the server clean after its contents were requested by the FBI. Tell me what businessman wouldn't be in prison the next day. Tell me what CEO of any corporation if the FBI said, we want the server, and they give it to them after they, they, they clean it, jail time. And incidentally, 1974, Hillary Clinton was a member of the presidential impeachment inquiry staff during the Watergate scandal. Do you know that she was fired from that for lying, lying? And that's what you want to be president? This slimy Clinton's back again? How can you still be a Democrat? I can understand if you're in favor of helping the poor or you want liberalism in your social beliefs. Why would you elect someone who is so slimy? Is that the best you can offer America? A slime ball like this? Dude. Savage.
And I, Michael Savage, am a mere kid in a hotel in the Catskill Mountains. And on stage there appears a young comedian with a lot of black hair. And the owner of the hotel is an ex-boxer, a pugilist. Of course, the people didn't understand that he was the greatest satirist of our time. And they fired him the next day. And I remember him very well. He doesn't remember me, but he's with us right now. Jackie Mason, welcome to the Savage Nation. Jackie, a real honor to have you on the show. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure, my friend. Happy Jackie, Jackie, I'm eating my kishkas out over a story I read this morning. 98 prominent Hollywood Jews back the Iran nuclear deal in an open letter. How can you, how can you deal with this? I'm not surprised the Hollywood crowd is always on the wrong side of every issue. They're always so super liberals, and they always support anything that's said by anybody who's liberal. If they hear a liberal voice, they don't know what he said. They're not sure. They never read a paper. They're basically a mob of ignorant people. They're just egomaniacs who spend their whole life standing in front of a mirror. <laughs> if you talk to them, anything but themselves, they never heard about it. They never saw it, but have an opinion on it. And they have it, and they and then they become furious because they hear that the conservatives or the Republicans are on this side, and they know, all they know is that they're on the other side. They don't know why, they don't know what the subject is. You could bet your life that all these people who just signed this don't know what they signed. They didn't even have a piece of paper in front of them. <laughs> all they know is which side is the president on. And they know That's it. Liberals. So, so Jackie, Jackie, they sign a letter saying give Iran the bomb so they can kill Jews, and they're Jewish Members of Hollywood? Are they crazy? Do you know that when they take a poll in Hollywood of the opinions of the actors, by far the biggest percentage of them are not even in favor, are not in favor of Israel against the Arabs. They're, they're on the Palestinian side of the issue. It's hard to believe. It's unimaginable. If you told this to people, do you know the Democrats, the Democratic Party membership? You remember at the convention when they when they mentioned the idea of Jerusalem should belong to Israel, that Jerusalem should be an Israeli city? Yes, I do remember what happened. Yes, the Democrats voted against it. Against it. They started booing it. They started booing the country. The, uh, the Hollywood crowd hates Israel. You would think Israel is, is, is a Nazi organization. Because <laughs> they hate Israel more than the Nazis. There's they hate Israel more than they hated Hitler. So here's another one for you, Jackie. Hillary, uh, the FBI picked up a blank Clinton email server. What do you have to say about that one? I can't hear you. What did you okay. Say? The FBI picked up Hillary Clinton's email server, and guess what, Jackie? It was blank. It was blank. Right. What do you think about that? She doesn't say they picked it up. She says she gave it to them. She gave it to them because they were there with the, oh, there were 12 FBI men standing in front of her, and they said, where is it? So she says, I gave it to them. You would think she came to their house, and she, and she purposely surprised them with it. You would think she volunteered it. You would, <laughs> you would think she did them a personal favor to make sure they have more evidence, so they decided to help them out. It turns out they were standing in front of them. Told the FBI men with their guns in their faces. You know what's going to happen? The, the uh, Clinton machine is very powerful in this country. She and her husband could get away with anything. I won't be surprised if the FBI winds up in jail. <laughs> That's probably, uh, oh, that, <laughs> oh, for breaking the law, for even for breaking <laughs> for breaking the law, for, for disturbing her because they came into the house an hour too early. They said. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's true. I didn't. I didn't think of it that way. They did disturb her. She's in the middle of a very important campaign. You would never, Jackie. Uh, you know, Jackie. You don't remember me. This is very funny. You were on my show many years ago, twelve, fifteen years ago, and I once saw you backstage in Las Vegas with a group. You were very friendly, but I reminded you then that I was a kid at the Riverview Hotel in in South Fallsburg, New York. That was one of the first hotels you ever appeared in. Do you ever remember those nights, those early days? Sure, I remember those days very well. Those days, I went from one hotel to the other every day. I was, I did the same thing that uh, that Hillary does, but was taking a different position every day from one to the other. Do you know that <laughs> Hillary has been on, on, in almost every position on every issue, twenty different times within an hour and a half? She has a foreign policy that's at least about fifteen minutes. Then she hears that the. Uh, 
Sanders is coming. She, Bernie Sanders has a different position, so she moves to his position. Then she hears that uh, Elizabeth Warren has another position, so she turns to that position. She, she turns left, turns right, turns left again, depending on who the opposition is and where it's coming from. If Elizabeth Warren went further left, she'd, she'd follow her all the way down off a cliff because she has to make sure she outdoes Elizabeth Warren. Then she finds out that Bernie Sanders is going in the opposite direction. All of a sudden, she's on that side. She's been turning and twisting. She's getting dizzy from being from so many positions every 15 minutes. This this Yenta <laughs> has no conscience and, and no policy. The only She has no policy. For, the only policy is to run from the police. The police is her policy. Jackie, let me ask you something. You and I both come from New York. You're a little older than I am. But we know the type of Jewish communist that Bernie Sanders is. Lifetime member of the radical socialist group since he's a child. How can this man attract such attention in a nation like this when he's such a schlemiel? I'm not at all surprised that he's attracting that much attention. It's all an anti-Hillary vote. People are so nauseous from her with her different positions on every issue every 15 minutes. She's such a floundering, preposterous character that they want anybody but her. They can't find anybody. So they saw a guy with a big mouth screaming, and they said, Thank God, at least there's somebody there. And they'll follow him any place just to get away from her. It's, it's, All right. oh, no, that explains why. I mean, I, un, unto himself, the man is not that appealing. He looks like a typical 1930s ILGW socialist screaming on a, 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 on a soapbox in Union Square. That's right. He sounds ridiculous. He sounds preposterous, but they don't care. They don't care as long as they hear another voice coming from someplace. It could come from a sanitarium, and they'd go there. They'd go any place to get away from her. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, here's a tough one for you. I... I Jackie, I happen to favor Donald Trump. I, I maybe I'm stepping into a quicksand with you. What do you think about Donald's candidacy? I think Donald uh, Donald Trump is a phenomenon. It's an unbelievably brilliant thing that's happening because uh, they talk about people tapping in, tapping in. You hear the way tapping in. You think you're going to a vaudeville show. It sounds like it's vaudeville. Everybody is talking about tapping in. That uh, he's tapping into a nerve. To, that is, represents the fact that everybody in America is nauseous and furious about the about politicians in general. Every politician makes a speech, and after the speech, he gets lost, and nothing happens. Then he makes another speech, nothing happens again. And they know these are recorded, meaningless speeches like Rubio. You ever listen to Rubio? Rubio. Oh. Rubio sounds like a broken record. He's, uh, when, when, Ru Rubio uh, sounds like a, a a kid, a child selling ice cream on the streets of Miami. Jackie, you're going to be performing October 24th, which is very uh, near to this date, in Westbury, New York, in, in Long Island, at the NYCB Theater. What will the performance be? Another one-man show, The Life According to Me? What's it going to be? Every time I do a show, it's, uh, there's no one specific subject or one issue. I talk about everything that's happening in general, everywhere in America or everywhere in the world. But what I talk about the, the presidency. I talk about what a preposterous system the presidency is. Take a look at take a look at the way they run these uh, these debates. Is there anything more idiotic than the debates? You have one minute to express all of your thoughts about foreign policy, America, domestic policy, anything that's happening everywhere in the world, and you have to do it in one minute. If you happen to breathe a little slow, oh, oh, you lost the debate, and you have to. <laughs> And you have to make sure they tell a better joke than the next guy because they don't remember any policy or any position. They just remember who told the best one-liner or the best joke. The next day, that's all they're talking about. So it becomes a comedy contest. If this was 50 years ago, Groucho Marx would be the president. <laughs> <laughs> so are you a fan of Megyn Kelly, the the woman who attacked Donald Trump? I, don't, I mean, you probably saw right through her act, right? That was such a phony, stupid, preposterous question that she asked him, and then she followed up with a more preposterous question, and then, the, then you know what happens? What happens is that a guy like him is liable to become president because he doesn't have any credentials. This is the only job in the world is the presidency of the United States where you have to have no background, no credentials of any kind, and you have to prove that you don't know nothing about the subject in order to get the job. Did you ever hear of a job where you have to know nothing in order to get, even if you want to become a plumber, you have to prove you have experience in plumbing. <laughs> but to become a president, you have to have no experience, no knowledge, no information. You have to have never heard anything about the job. 
up in order to become a plumber. Why do you think the toilets in America are working so perfectly? But the government is full of it. <laughs> well, that, take a look. Take a look at take a look at Barack Obama. He had no experience. Look where we are today as a result of it, and yet he gets away with it. The man still has charisma. How is it possible after so many disastrous policies and dragging America over the cliff of socialist in insanity, he still has a popularity rating that's so high? His popularity rating is so high because exactly because he doesn't know what he's doing. That's exactly why his popularity is so high. Be because listen to this, they, in America today, if you want to be a president, take a look at what happens. You have to know nothing about anything because there's no there's no uh, preparation necessary and there's no <laughs> and there's no standards. There's no take a look at you from they protect you from a bad haircut in this country. If you want to become a barber, you have to pass a test. The union demands that you guarantee they have to you, uh, graduate high school to become a barber. Did you know that you have to graduate high school? There's a standard to become a barber, but there's no test to become a president. They protect. <laughs> They protect you in this country from a bad haircut. <laughs> I, you know, when you were, you were on, you were a couple of weeks ago, you said something about people in New York City are, are more protected from a bad tuna fish sandwich than they are from a nuclear weapon. What was that about? But that's what I said. I said this a number of times. This is so true. They give you 28 days. 28 days they give you, they give Iran to find out exactly what he's doing over there with the creating a bomb. They give him 28 days notice. So for 28 days, they assume he's going to do nothing. He's just going to wait to show you the bomb. For 28 days, he could put the bomb in the toilet. He could leave it in the kitchen. <laughs> he could take it. He could do whatever he wants with it. Wait to show you the bomb. But it's an amazing thing. <laughs> it's an amazing thing in, the, in New York City when they inspect the, when they inspect the restaurant. They give you no notice. You just pop in and you catch them if they... If, <laughs> <laughs> they put you from a bed in the fish. <laughs> There's no protection. <laughs> Jackie, Jackie, you're the greatest satirist of our time. I love your humor. And I hope that the people will visit your website, JackieMason.com, and they will flood the, the Westbury NYCB Theater on October 24th to see the Mark Twain of our time, the Yiddish Mark Twain of our time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my friend. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much. What a kick it was for me. Been a long time. Jackie Mason on the Savage Nation. That brings us up to a break. When I come back, calls on any of the topics right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. you got to understand what a big kick that was for me. I mean, when I was a kid, Jackie Mason was uh, a grown man, a young one, who had just appeared in this little hotel I remember it to this day, the Riverview Hotel, South Fallsburg, New York. I never heard of him. No one knew who he was. He was just starting out. So like all stand-up comedians, he did his shtick. The owner threw him out the next day because the people didn't get him. They didn't laugh. Here's the story. I always knew this guy would go far. Why? As he was leaving the hotel, fully dressed, trench coat, holding a suitcase, the, the guys, and they were pretty bad guys. They were uh, busboys, waiters. They picked him up and threw him into the swimming pool, fully clothed. And I remember my, my heart went out to this guy because I said, what are they doing? They threw him in the pool, and you see his suitcase burst open, all his possessions floating in the water. He's soaked from head to toe. Did he get mad? Did he fume? Did he scream? He wouldn't let them see that. He mocked them. He smiled at them like he was in on the joke. I remember to this day, I could see his face looking up from the swimming pool at the, the, the bastards, frankly, uh, who threw him in the pool. He wouldn't let them know that they had hurt him in any way. So he had a lot of fight in him. And look where he is today. I mean, he's, he's uh, an inspiration to me in many ways because it shows me that you can keep going in this field literally as long as you're on the earth. And I want to thank him for being an inspiration. He was terrific. I loved it. 855 Savage Nation. Any topic is fair game. 
WABC, Cy, welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Yes, I remember Jackie Mason up in the Catskills when I was a busboy. And he was great. Get a lot of inspiration to a lot of people. The only thing that the people had against him, being that you said that they threw him in the pool, the only thing that he that they had against him, that his mimicking of the Jews, they didn't really take. And to this day, I have a lot of a lot of inspiration to him. I think he's a great man, but he has to get rid of that that Jewish thing that he has. And that turns a lot of people off. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's he's eighty something years old. You think he's going to change his act? But the thing is, the act was always an act. Like even when he started. Well, well what do you mean? This? I don't understand what you're saying. What Jewish thing? This ethnic thing of the way Jewish people talk. Jewish oh, you mean you mean mim mocking the way they talk? No one talks like that anymore, which is what makes them even funnier. Yeah, but. Well, it's, all right, let's not split hairs. Most people, I'm going to be in New York next week, and uh, if Jackie's available, I'm going to try and have him on live from WABC Studios in New York. I hope he comes on over. I'll even take him out for a knish. I'll really go for a lot of money there. But uh, I don't know if he even wants to do live, but I'm going to have guests in New York, uh, definitely, right out of the WABC above the, uh, the Madison Square Garden on a couple of days next week. Then I'm going to do some vacation days while I'm there. I don't actually know what I'm going to do. I do know what I'm going to do. Next week, I'm going to go out with a cinematographer to my old neighborhood in Queens, and I'm going to reminisce. I always like Chinese food, and my house is, is in a neighborhood that's all Chinese. And my mother sold the house to a Chinese family, by the way, many years ago. I'm glad that Chinese moved in there. Imagine walking back to my old neighborhood and smelling Chinese food. It'd be wonderful. I'll feel right at home. This is... Well, I got another big hour. What am I giving you? The, this is don't don't go away. I'll be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282. Savage. Adult content. Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I mean, yeah. Oh, the New York, New York is very good. New York, it's a big thrill for me. I'm a hermit. I live in San Francisco. I keep to myself. And... Uh, taken off on uh, next week on a broadcast out of New York City, W... ABC, it's a big deal. I haven't done it since last August. I don't go anywhere. I really don't because I have everything I need at my fingertips. What's the point of going anywhere? But while I'm there, I'm going to do a number of interesting things, try to get some local guests on the show who you may be interested in. Last hour, of course, if you listen, we had Jackie Mason on, and he's still a kick. He always gives me a chuckle because he has a way of cutting through the, uh, you know, he sees it for what it is, and he turns it into a way that's very, very funny. But what's not funny are the issues of the day and the liars who are running us off the cliff called politicians. Now, if that's overly harsh, I apologize in advance. However, there's no other way to explain what they're doing to us other than destroying the nation. There's no uh, nice way about it. It's that simple. And we were talking about a socialist uh, group called Amnesty International, usually on every issue anti-American, Suddenly, out of nowhere, this week, they come out saying they want to decriminalize prostitution. So it set off a lot of conversation yesterday on the Savage Nation, as again today. And many of you are calling only about that topic. And if you care to join that discussion, the phone number is 855-400-7282. But before we do, I'd like to lighten it up a bit and play an early Jackie Mason tape that I think is going to give you a kick. Let's just listen to it for a minute. You know that Jewish people are the only people in the world who gain weight even when they go to a gym or a health club to lose weight. Watch Gentiles in a gym or a health club. You ever see how busy they are? Swimming, jumping, barbells, doorbells, dumbbells, they clop, they hack, they're so busy. They're crashing into walls, into furniture, schmetzing and clopping and hacking. But every Jew is on a bicycle. This is not very good.
The proof is, if you take a look at any Jew, his chest is collapsing, but his legs are blowing up from the back. <laughs> Everything I'm telling you is the truth. Why do you think you'd ever see a Jew in a bar? You never see a Jew in a bar. I don't mean a real pickup joint where lowlifes run around picking up girls like this man. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about decent people in a real bar where there's real drinking going on. You'll never see a Jew there. Never. Unless he got lost looking for a piece of cake and a cup of cake. Because <laughs> a Jew is not comfortable in a bar. They're not comfortable there. Just like a Gentile is not too comfortable in a restaurant. When a Gentile walks into a restaurant, they're very nervous. They walk in like, how do you do? May I sit down? May I sit down? How long should I wait? Nine years? Why not? <laughs> Nine years is okay. You ever see how a Jew walks into a restaurant like a partner? Hello! <laughs> Let me see my table. No matter which table you show, you call this a table for a man like me. I don't sit so close to a wall, so far from a window. My wife don't like the face this way, I don't like the face that way, we don't like the face this way. Why is there so many people in this section that can be moved over here? The Gentiles ate four meals already, the Jews are picking furniture. Love you, see. It takes them three hours to pick out a table, then they start a whole new fight. Why is it so drafty here? You ever see, you ever see Gentiles are lying in a restaurant? If you don't serve them for 12 years, they'll never complain before them. They didn't come in before he came down. He sat down before he got up. He walked out before he came forth. I'll sue that bastard, that son of a bitch. And meanwhile, the Gentiles are sleeping. All right, that's enough. It's very funny. I needed to laugh. It's just, <laughs> it is summertime. I figured maybe you want to laugh along with me. I love his humor. And uh, it was a pleasure to have him on the show to talk about Hillary Clinton's uh, blank email server and uh, the 98 Hollywood Jews who signed uh, an ad to give Iran the nuclear weapon so they can kill Jews. It's unbelievable to me the insanity going on in the world. And sometimes only humor can save us from the, from the mayhem. The mayhem is just out of control. 855-407-282. You know the topics. Let's see what you have to say about it. WBAP in Dallas. Matthew, what's your topic? Go ahead, please. Savage, I love Gentile jokes. Okay, I get it. That's funny. <laughs> no, really. I mean, it's great to hear a conservative voice coming from an entertain entertainment icon like Jackie. Especially from a, from a Jewish guy from New York who you would assume is a liberal, which he is not. Yeah, he's not. And I bet he's not signing up anytime too soon to have his daughters become, or his granddaughters become prostitutes through Amnesty Ooh. International. He knows that. Okay, so you, so you want to talk about the legal de uh, prostitution story. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was just going to say, prostitution is an erosion of the soul. Talk to any woman out there who's been forced to do that, to, to make a living or put food on the table. Talk to any man who's desperate enough to go and, and use that service, and you're going to be talking about depraved individuals, people who are... Okay, I, I agree with you, but I want to ask, I want to state a point. I have read <clears throat> where certain prostitutes have said, what's the difference between my selling my body and a wife who doesn't really care for her husband sleeping with him for the benefits that she is uh, accruing or gaining by doing so. Isn't that a form of prostitution? You know, how do you know what's in that, that truly in that woman's heart? If, if she is married out of convenience or for the money, that's sad and that's tragic. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone, man or woman. But she's not actually out taking cash from, from various people, spreading diseases, like you said earlier, uh, continuing that lifestyle, not trying to, to better herself or, or the world around her. All right, that's a, fair, that's a fairly good argument. Just on the issue of, if you want to make it as hygienic uh, as an issue as you can, just on the issue of disease spread, I would think people would be a little crazy to engage in this, don't you? People would have to be nuts to do it, but they, in a way, they are nuts by going out and doing that. 
I mean, yeah, but look, let, let's be clear. It's been going on a long time. It's been said that uh, uh, prostitution is the world's oldest profession. I would disagree. I would say it was uh, it, it would be politicians or the political world would be the world's oldest pr pr uh, profession. I would say prostitutes came second and the politicians came first. But I I don't want to split hairs with you. I thank you for the call. It was very clever. Eight five five four seven two eight two WABC. John, issue of prostitution. What's your opinion? Yes, my opinion is uh, it's wrong, it's uh, illegal, and I'm against it. And uh, at one time, I aided and abetted prostitution, but I was an escort driver for about two years uh, here in the New York City area, and I saw firsthand what it does to people. And uh, what what did, what did you see? You you obviously were a livery driver who took them to their to their uh, clients, so to speak. Yes, um, most of these girls from different walks of life were drug addicts. They were mothers. They were students. They were people from all walks of life doing this for money. So obviously for money. And uh, it's I just saw a downside of it. But here in uh, New York... Hey, hey John, as you drove the girls home from a night of hooking, so to speak, selling their bodies for cash, what did you see? What did I see? Um, in them, did they look deflated, depressed? Did they look, like, elated? Did they have a good time? What did they look like? No, they didn't look like they had a good time. They looked deflated, depressed. And the boss said, you can't look at them as humans. They're not humans. Oof. And, oh, boy. Uh, yeah. So so, I mean, so uh, do, you feel, do you feel personally guilty and ashamed that you were involved in it? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I did. But I stopped it because it got too sleazy. And um, it got really sleazy when I had a girl in my car. She calls her mother up as if she's calling from work. And she's telling her mother that she had two tricks for the night. And her mother knew exactly what she was doing. Okay? And then I realized that I can't do this anymore. You mean it was so, it was so depraved? Is that it? It's very, it's very depraved. Okay? And there's a lot of girls doing it. Okay? In every major city. This is a very large business in New York City. Millions of dollars a year. There must be 10,000 escort agencies. I'm not talking about the girls that walk on the street. I'm talking about escort agencies. It's a very big business. Okay. I so if you, if you go to a hotel in New York City, an upscale hotel, and you see an ad for an escort, does that mean prostitution? M yes, most of the time. Well, but it's illegal. Isn't isn't it illegal though, uh, John? I mean, when the girl gets there, what if the guy, uh, you know, overtly says, "I want sex, and I'll give you whatever you want"? Doesn't? It, what if she's a, a decoy? He can go to jail, right? Sure, I could have went to jail also, aiding and abetting, because they used to turn over the cash to me, and then I would turn the cash over to the boss. You know, like two. Oh, 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 oh! So you were more de deeply enmeshed in this than uh, than you care to talk about. I get it. I never got caught. Um, we used to travel at night, 8 at night to 8 o'clock in the morning is when most escort agencies operate. And but John, how did you get out of this business? Uh, John, look, you're, dealing, you're talking about dealing with heavy-duty underworld people. Uh, aren't you afraid to talk on the radio? No, not at all. It's a few years ago. You know, I had a fight with my boss, and, uh, you know, I said I can't do this anymore, so he never bothered me. But um, Interesting. it's funny because, uh, you know, I look at the girl next door, you know, where I live, and I say to myself, she could be doing it. There's so many girls doing this. Okay, people here, as well as, uh, you know, in San Francisco, people are struggling. The rents are sky high. There's so many girls doing it. They're selling their bodies. It's a bigger business than people realize. Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah. John, thanks. As I say, you know, Reality 101 on the Savage Nation is what's really of interest to me. And I find this... I don't know why, but it's amazing the kind of interesting call, uh, kind of calls we're getting are striking me as far more poignant than just talking about uh, Clinton's uh, email server. If you care to talk about this topic, go ahead, make our day. 855-400-7282, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com.
It is the savage nation where conservatism is decriminalized on a daily basis. You'll hear that tomorrow on another show, but I thought it was funny. Yep, we decriminalize conservatism and patriotism on a daily basis on the savage nation. And we're talking about a topic that's a little off the beaten path. It's not about Trump. It's not about the election, which is 15,000 years away. You know, I have a young man who works for me, drives me, and I sometimes ask him what he thinks about topics as we're listening to other shows. And I said, do you really care about the election in 2016? He looks at me, he says, not really, it's so far away. What is this obsession on every show in the world about 2016? I can't do it. A little bit here, if some news is made, yes, but when in the world did this become the norm in the media to turn an election, which is a year and a half away, into a daily a daily fair on television and radio. I don't understand the obsession over this. The only answer is that Obama is so terrible, he's done so much damage, so much harm to the world, that people cannot wait for the election to get rid of him. But don't count, uh, count on it. We voted twice to get rid of him and get, get rid of his communist philosophy and policies. And look what we got. We got John Boehner and Mitch McConnell. That's what we got. 855 wbap in Dallas, line 7. Go ahead, please. What's your uh, topic today? Uh, prostitution and the, your question that you posed to your listeners earlier, Dr. Savage. Um, was caught up in sexual sin for over 20 years. It cost me marriage. It cost me a whole lot more than that. And I'm against the legalization of prostitution. Uh, I had to live at a Christian men's ministry for seven months to get my head out of my you-know-where and my feet on the ground uh, after I came to realize how messed up I was. This is, um, where, this is extremely important, and I don't want to go over your words. What did the Christian ministry do for your sex addiction? They showed me... The depravity of my sin and how much bigger the mercy of God is in relation to the, the still in my, when it, through my eyes, the, the, how depraved I was. And the mercy of God overwhelmed it. And it broke me. Uh, I, I had an experience, and I, I'm not one to, you know, go on and on about visions or something. I don't know if it was a vision, but I know I was touched. I, I was broken. I. I was sitting out in a cold September night uh, underneath the stars, and I, I saw mercy. And I had been praying for it for five months. I had, literally. Every and, what, and in what form did mercy appear? Remember the movie The Passion of Christ? I do. At the very end, you see him get up and walk out of the tomb with the light shining on his face, right? Yes. It inspired me going outside and sitting out. I had been reading about God's promises to me, to, to the believer, and there's some beautiful promises. I was, I, they, they jumped off the page to me. They came alive. They were big. And it was like a voice said to me, go out to the ridge. It was a piece of ground just, you know, five-minute walk from where I was sitting inside. And I went out, I sat down, and I said, God, you got something for me. I don't know what it is, but I'm here. I'm going to sit here till you show up. And there was a small town a few miles away. The tree line was backlit by the dim lights of the town. Trees were sticking up. And Doc, as my, as God is my witness, after a few minutes of just looking, it seemed like those trees started to move. They had an energy all their own. It was dark. It was moving. And they changed shape, and the shapes were harsh shapes. They were sharp shapes. And they were moving with an energy that I didn't like. It feared me. And I didn't hear an audible voice, but a strong impression came to me, and that was this. That's your sin, Matt, and it's beating your Savior to death. And it went down. Unbelievable. So you were able to kick your sex addiction, especially that attraction to prostitution after that? Um... It's a day-to-day -day thing, Doc. I, it, I've gotten much better. Am I, am I, all I hear you. I hear you. Unbelievable how we touched the raw nerve. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Wait a minute. 
If there was nothing top secret about the images, why'd she erase them? Well, don't ask such questions. Now that we live in a banana republic, get used to it. All right, get used to it and just focus instead on other things. 855-400-7282. On the, the, nobody will let go of this topic of legalization of prostitution or not to legalize. And I know why. It's because we know we can't control the political system. We've learned that in the last two elections. Yes, we'll vote. Yes, we'll vote for any Republican over any Democrat, Socialist, Islamist. I get it. Yes, we'll continue to listen to our favorite conservative talk radio shows and uh, go to the you know, websites attached to them. But we really know it almost makes no difference. We're living in a dictatorship, a one-party monopoly. Democrats, Republicans, as I defined them many years ago, which is why I call it Government Zero in my new book. But the fact is, many of us have given up on the political system. We're, I don't know what the turnout's going to be. I don't think it's going to be as high as people hope. But there's one thing we can do, and that's save ourselves. Many of us know we can't save the country. We'd like to, but we don't think we can. Many of us know we can do only one thing, which is save our own souls. And I think that is why this topic of legalization of prostitution or not has struck such a raw nerve on my program. That would be my analysis. At the end of the day, people know that they can only save themselves for sure. They don't know about saving the country, but they know one thing. If they stop their bad behavior, they might just be able to save their own souls. And I think that's why we're getting such a reaction to this. And about six months ago, I moved in this direction of lifestyle questions, you remember? And then I did the uh, open mic on lifestyle questions. I may do that again. I may do it for the rest of the summer because I find it to be, for me, refreshing. It's something I'm good at. And as I told you when I was told you uh, when I was a kid trying to de decide what to be, you know how kids try things on, and a doctor would come in the house and he'd say to me, "What are you studying in school?" And I would say, "I'm going to be a psychiatrist." I really didn't even know what it what it meant. And the doctor who was a, at that time a doctors at, at my socioeconomic level were role models. Never forget that they were highly educated. They were usually far more intelligent than most people. And this young doctor said to me, why would you want to listen to people's problems for your entire life? Well, that was the end of my psychiatric career. And here I am, in a way, being a combination entertainer, social worker, and psychiatrist on the Savage Nation. When you think about it, what do you think we really do on, the, on, on radio? We, we do a combination of things. And I don't think we should forget that this is a ten-ring circus. And I'm not going to just sit in the ring of politics because it bores the life out of me. There's only so much I can take of it. And so I want to stick to this issue. I, I found it exciting yesterday. and I was able to sleep better last night because I felt that my show was fun again. In the old, you know, the old way, when I say fun, I don't mean listening to people's tragedies makes it fun. It was, what's the word I'm looking for? No, exciting, uh, lifted me up. I was interested in the show. I didn't feel that I was just going to die if I talked one more minute about Hillary Clinton. You know, I can't take it. So if I can't take it, you can't take it. Let's take a call. Josh, KSFO, San Francisco. Go ahead on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Uh, I grew up and my mom was a prostitute my whole life, you know, and I'm just totally against it because I've seen what it does firsthand. You know? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to drag you through the, the mud of your memory, but... Obviously, uh, it, it, it wrecked you in some ways, right? Oh, of course. You know, I mean, like, it, I grew up with no respect for women, you know, and, you know, I mean, luckily I was saved, and, you know, I, I've, I've gained some morals, you know, but... It you, was, was saved it was, by, you were saved by Christianity, I take it. Yeah, yeah. It was a horrible life. Now, Josh, you were, obviously your mother, your mother was poor. What did you grow up in, an SRO hotel here in San Francisco? No, we, uh, I kind of grew up in Sacramento, you know, and we lived from hotel to hotel or if we even had a place to stay, you know. And That's then awful. Trick uh, and now, did, did, you did, you did you have to, what, did she ask you to leave the room? I don't want to get too detailed here. Um, if, if we were in a place with two rooms, I would just go in the other room, you know, as I got older. But when I was younger, she would have, like, other girls around with her and, they would take turns taking us out to, like, wherever, go for a walk or whatever, you know. 
Oh my God, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't great, you know. So, I mean, and she was on drugs, and that had a lot to do with it. You know, she ended up dying of an overdose of heroin. You know, so. Wow, and you and you 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 let's say uh, you survived that. What else can we say? I mean, you survived that life. Yeah, I survived it and came out pretty good. I think you know. Oh. Well, you're 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 strong enough. You're strong enough to call a national talk radio show and expose what went on in your life without cracking up and do it quite and and do it in quite a literal, uh, beautiful way. I mean, you you did a beautiful job just now, Josh. I want to thank you for sharing that that tragedy, frankly, with us on the Savage Nation. Thanks for listening and thanks for calling. Unbelievable to me. Unbelievable to me. KSFO online. Al, welcome. You're on the Savage Nation. What's the topic? Dr. Savage, you've been my psychiatrist for uh, 15 years or more. I uh, started listening to you in Detroit and um, was really drawn to what you had to say, the truth that you bring up, the fundamental truths, the references of the Bible, and, and so on. And Well, Al, wait a minute. Wait. Before you go on, I've been your psychiatrist for 15 years. Can you give me your home address so I can send you my bill? <laughs> I, <laughs> I owe you everything. Um, You've uh, you've been wonderful, and and I think that's why people are drawn to you is, is that you you speak of the truth, you you reference uh, the Bible, and um, it for me I was a businessman that was traveling around the world and and seeking out you know the seediest places so that I could uh, try to fill a, a deep deep hole in my heart. Um, I'd fill it with booze and other things, and and eventually would would end up with with women and. Um, it, it really was just tearing me apart as I was trying to do good things for others, and then I was trying to, you know, fill my own voids that I uh, that I had, and um, eventually it nearly tore me apart in my marriage and my my children, and um, it was crisis. Did you well, hold on, Al? Did, did you get caught? Honestly, did you get caught by your wife, or did you get in trouble with the law? I, I, I could have many, many times, but I, I'd say the hand of God steered me out of those situations. I don't know if my wife could have handled it. Um, she doesn't listen, so I'm, I'm safe here. But um, in, other, in other words, she's a liberal, so you feel safe to call the show. No, she's uh, she's conservative, uh, a, a fine fine woman, and uh, I, I owe her everything. Her, her loyalty, you know, her old school uh, trust. Um, in, so what what is it that got you? What, what is it that freed you from the slavery of your own addiction? Was it was it God? Are you going to tell me it was a religious experience? Yes, it it, it was. I, uh, I I just really got you know the old phrase sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was fat. I was drunk all the time. I was you know just searching out really bad things, and I, I nearly got arrested with firearms and alcohol. And I mean, it was it was a really bad scene, and and I didn't. And it was that near miss that uh, that woke me up. Um, and I quit drinking. I quit smoking. I I lost my job. I quit working. And and then I was able to. It was the summertime, and I was able to focus with my uh, family. And um, it was seeing my family that really. Uh, really caught my eyes to what my legacy was going to be not you know not some drunken uh, stupor it was going to be my, my children my family that uh, was going to continue my legacy. Well, I usually children can be a salvation for men it changes a man from being a wild a wild creature to somebody who is more constrained let's put it to you that way yeah, yeah, and, and like I said, Christ really came in and filled that hole that the gentleman earlier talked of, seeing a, a vision and a, his sin just being washed away, and um, the, the same what thing. Was your, Al, what was your vision? What vision did you see? He told us about the trees moving, coming at him. I, I can't say that I, I had anything that vivid. It, it, was, it was just the, the guilt and the release of... Um, you know, all the guilt and anxiety and all the cover-ups and everything that it was just simply washed away and it it was shed in mm -hmm. tears and um and weeping and um it, it was just a, a amazing relief to uh, to know that I was forgiven no matter what I had done and um you know that no one is beyond that and I was mm -hmm. in some prison ministry even after that and to be able to relate to men and, and women. Wait, wait, I missed that. You you were a prison minister or a, you were in prison ministry? I was in prison ministry after I opened my eyes 
to see what was being done. I, I joked that I was serving my sentences, uh, you know, a few hours at a time. Oh, so you would, would go in and talk to the criminals about salvation, and in doing so, you were saving yourself. Uh, yeah, more than uh, more than I know. And um, it, well, that's the that those those situations usually make for the best teachings, whether it be in mathematics or anything else, uh, to be honest with you. The best teachers are often in those situations. Al, thanks for listening. We're getting great callers. And the uh, upright among men is no more. Read the Bible. Thou shalt eat but not be satisfied. And thy sickness shall be in thine inner inward parts. And you shall conceive but shall not bring forth. That sounds like sterility. Well, for me, this is the one I like this time of year, Last of the Summer Fruits in Micah 7, where he says, Woe is me, for I am as the last of the summer fruits, as the grape gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat, no first ripe fig which my soul desireth. This is unbelievable. The godly man is perished out of the earth, and the upright among men is no more. They all lie in wait for blood. Amen to that. They hunt every man his brother with a net. Their hands are upon that which is evil to do it diligently. The prince asks, and the judge is ready for a reward. And the great man, he uttereth the evil desire of his soul. And so they weave it together. The best of them is as a briar. The most upright is worse than a thorn hedge. This is pretty good stuff. Put not your confidence in a familiar friend. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. So if you think that the social discord and the familial discord that has become so prevalent in our society is new, I'm afraid to tell you it's as old as the Bible itself. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Yeah, welcome back to the uh, Savage Nation. Look, this show is an addiction to a very hardcore audience and has been for a number of years. I don't know what the numbers are. People, you know, they say, this number listens, that number a million, no one really knows. But at the base of it, there's a hardcore audience for every one of these shows and radio. Each one of us has our own specific following, and then there's an overlap. And I know many of you who are uh, what I would call the hardcore savage, savagette listenership, usually listen for more than an hour a day, and you listen as often as you can, and you know me for many, many years ago, and you know that this is the type of show that I made my reputation with. It was never really reading the news and then talking about politics. Anyone can do that. It's easy. It's Talk Radio 101. Everyone can sound smart reading someone else's article. Radio is hard when you go outside of the websites. But I began in radio before there was a website. Do you know that? And I have got to tell you something. I'm the only one in radio who grew up listening to radio because I was born before television. It's hard to say. I'm not going to complain about it. A fact can't be changed. I grew up listening to radio, not to television. So I have a natural ear for what it is to listen to a radio show where you have to use your mind. Television can be tremendous. I love television. But you're more of a vegetable watching television because you don't have to really use your imagination in that the imaginary people from Hollywood create the images for you. So what's there to imagine? You can only put yourself into their, into their pictures. In, with radio, you have to make your own pictures. And I also speak pictographically, for those of you who understand what I'm saying. I don't know how I do it, but my words create pictures for you, which is why it's easy listening. And so the picture today is quite clear. And I've enjoyed the show thus far. We have time for a couple of additional callers. Blake on WBOB Radio, welcome to the Savage Nation. Blake, what's your topic? Michael, thank you very much. Um, my topic is very simple. What you do inside your house, what you do in the private, ultimately comes out in public. There's no separation of the two. Meaning? Well, if you think about uh, the references to the white, white, white washed coffins, 
what our where our hearts are, where our minds are, ultimately will be reflected in our actions and our words and our deeds. Yeah, okay, but are there are not always consequences to that. FBI picked up blank Clinton email server. We know that she conducted a criminal act. We know that she committed espionage. We know that any other citizen would go to jail for what she did. And we also know nothing's going to happen to her. I'm speaking more to the cultural issues you've been talking about. Ultimately, no, I understand, but but when you but here's the thing: when you look at these dem demagogues like Hillary Clinton getting away with virtual espionage, according to this these articles, which are shocking, satellite images that she that she sanitized off her server, anyone else would go to jail for this. I agree with you. And so what I'm doing is I'm saying to you: yes, we the little people have to pay for our sins then why do people like her not have to pay for their sins? Why? WVLK Radio, Mark, go ahead. You're going to be the last caller of the hour. Fire away. Yes, Dr. Savage. I just wanted to bring something up that's not been discussed yet, and I think it's going to have a huge impact, not just on prostitution, but on human sexuality. With the advances in artificial intelligence and advanced servo systems, robotics will dramatically affect human sexualism. You see it in Asia already. Um, think about the ability to go up and order any race, any size, any shape, any age that you want. Rent whoa, whoa, whoa! What you mean a, a robotic? A robotic? This is a, a crazy. You're saying that it would be legal to have an underage robot? As a sex partner? Got it. Think about it. What? It's not a human. This brings in a whole different... Well, now there's going to have to be laws about that. My God. What an interesting idea that is. What an interesting idea that is. Thanks for listening to the Savage Nation. And don't forget, government zero.